All right, and uh, the rest of the meeting is going to be largely devoted to a discussion about the San Antonio Tomorrow Comprehensive Plan. And for, for those of you who have uh, not heard of it or um, not aware, uh, basically this is the city of San Antonio's um, official long-range planning initiative uh, to provide policy guidance for future growth, development, uh, land use, infrastructure and services that the city is anticipating um, will be needed to accommodate a projected um, a, a million additional residents that will supposedly be here in our city by uh, 2040. Um, as part of the planning, uh, the city is um, rolling out the planning in different regions of the city. We're in the first round, uh, our neighborhood and Broadway um, are um, within the Midtown plan, and Garrett Phillips from City Planning is facilitating the planning for the Midtown region. Um, and he's been uh, holding meetings over the past year and working with our uh, neighborhood association to get uh, input specifically about um, um, our views on. The, the comprehensive plan and uh, uh, eliciting um, concerns about the, the plan and the uh, initiative. And um, Butch Hayes is our official uh, Mankey Park neighborhood representative on the Midtown Planning Region. Butch, would you raise your hand? I'm going to play one of the students. And I, uh, he, Butch is also our official rep representative on uh, the Tier 1 Neighborhood uh, Coalition, which is a grassroots um, uh, organization that has um, uh, sprung up um, to address the concerns of many neighborhoods, uh, particularly in within the uh, 410, um, uh, the inner city, uh, if you will. Um, and um, I would like to ask Butch to first briefly address the, um, the group to uh, discuss um, his perspective as the official representative on uh, the Midtown region for our neighborhood, as well as um, concerns um, and or um, the perspective from the Tier 1 Coalition. So Bruce, I'd like to turn it over to you first. If you Bruce, but, which, sorry, <coughs> sorry. Bruce. Yeah. Okay. Quick to get my house together. I think um, one of the things that I said last weekend in the, in the uh, seminar that we had, proud of what Manatee Park has been able to do because, and it's one, the reason for our seminar last week was to get the people that are going to do this next prepared. The question to me was, well, but you were on the committee now, how should people prepare to be on the committee? Preparing to be on a committee is very difficult <laughs> to begin with, but the most important thing that I could convey to anybody is your willingness to do your own research, to go and look to see what's on the web, what's going on citywide. The second thing is participation. Go to as many meetings other than the San Antonio Tomorrow meetings. How well do you know your council person? How well do you know anybody in city government that doesn't do the zoning? Have you been to a zoning meeting? Have you been to a committee meeting of uh, our city council and see how things work? Understand, get to understand, because they're not all working the same way. Have you gone to a city council meeting? See how it works. Either go to go to a session, but B is all right, but it's it's not the same thing. It's a, there's a level there. Mm -hmm. And what I had that I did not see in the other neighborhoods is that Polly and Steve and others came to the meetings. And the meetings are open to everyone. And anyone can come. 
the ones that are in the discussion are the ones that are on that, but that doesn't mean you can't participate. Uh, we also had, there's Jared, correct me if I'm wrong, three or two or three uh, public uh, com uh, community meetings. Two, there's two. one more to go. One more to go, where people can come and participate. It's for the community to become knowledgeable about what San Antonio tomorrow is. Questions? Is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's a good start. Uh, just um, the success of the plan and the implications for our neighborhood really depend upon how much um, the whole neighborhood uh, participates, not just uh, the members of the Mankey Park Neighborhood Association right. Board it's, it's um, and uh, Tier 1. It really depends upon participation and input from, from all uh, from all of us. And so we hope for those of you who are not yet familiar with the plan to um, to learn what you can and go to um, any of the upcoming uh, meetings. Um, thank you, Butch. Well, I think that, uh, yeah, another point uh, we should keep in mind is, yeah, everybody has to participate. Everybody has to be knowledgeable. You should worry and be concerned about What's the city planning for me, or for us? And it's being, yeah, okay, you've got a former Peace Corps volunteer talking to you. We were trained to be an agent of change. It's, are you willing to accept change? It's been my job, <laughs> part of my life, to get in, in there and, and work on it. I was also on Mayor Cisneros planning committee uh, when he was doing his strategic plan, so this is not my first go-round, although he did it completely differently. We had sectors there. Education had one, employment had one. We had different committees, but then it came together. And that was about when we were doing BRAC and when uh, we were losing Kelly Air Force Base. That was a challenge for those of us that were in technical education, and we had to really work together get it done. Thanks so much, Butch. And, and uh, we'll uh, also uh, be uh, looking for you to chime in as the discussion continues. Yes, Mary. Holly, could somebody post these meetings on the Manatee Park Facebook page? I mean, I don't know when they are. I don't know where they are. So, yeah, I could. A lot of them. Go, but I don't know. Um, various meetings have been previously posted and we'll continue to try and, and do that. Um, Only for as well as on the Facebook today, page. That one, but the other but, one that you're on the T, uh, you can't go that. Only you. Yeah, you can, can, can put a link okay. to. We can put the link to the Midtown Planning Regional. Mm -hmm. They all have where. And you can here. register have, with uh, like, San Antonio uh, tomorrow to I'll receive the information. Yeah, I'll show you a web page. I pass around an email sign up sheet as well. Yeah, anybody can get that information. Yeah. And oh. the steering committee I, for the tier one, I, I try to keep the officers informed, but we can also put that out. That would be great. And, and next, I'd like uh, to ask George Grimes to briefly uh, present to the group. Uh, when Garrett um, uh, met with us last month, um, and was soliciting input. Um, there was a bit of a Q&A at the end of that session. Um, several of us were surprised when uh, at the end someone raised a question about um, what the Midtown Plan and SA Tomorrow, um, what that would mean for the existing neighborhood plans. And the answer that um, that Garrett gave was perhaps a little bit unclear to other to some of us and or surprising and concerning to others. And so I'm I would like uh, George to give just a brief history of our neighborhood plan, why it was originally put together and um, I guess some of the concerns about um, SA the SA tomorrow planning uh, for for our neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm George Grimes. Uh, I was on the original neighborhood planning committee that we did back in 1983, and then, I, then we updated the plan in 2000 and 2001. I was on that planning committee. Uh, I'm, I was also on the, the planning committee for the neighborhood conservation district, and we are 
currently updating the neighborhood conservation district, and I'm on that committee. Um, when we did the neighborhood plan in, uh, in 2000, <clears throat> we had about uh, 38 different residents and other stakeholders, and we met for months and months and months, and it, uh, hundreds of hours of meetings to discuss the plan. And so this, this is the final plan. It's, uh, it's 72 pages with uh, some appendic, appendices, uh, and, and it covered a, a lot of areas. And as I understand what we're doing with this uh, Midtown plan, we're, we're talking about mostly uh, land use, but, but the neighborhood plan has uh, goals and categories um, for neighborhood development, transportation and infrastructure, um, community facilities and quality of life, uh, and so forth. And then we deal, dealt with a lot of areas other than uh, just land use. We had uh, one goal had to do with quality of life for elderly adult residents. We had uh, goals on safety, animal care, crime prevention, code compliance. I mean, it, it was a really comprehensive plan. So to me, it's really disturbing to hear that this plan is going to go away. And <laughs> the, the, uh, the FAQs, I went on the, the community development website, and one of, the, one of the questions was, what will happen to the adopted land use plans, neighborhood plans, et cetera? And uh, to me, the answer was kind of ambiguous. And they said, as we produce the new regional center community and corridor plans, we'll work to incorporate elements from existing adopted plans that address land use. Um, when I went and looked at the, uh, the minutes of the city council meeting that uh, where, where this was adopted in uh, when was it, August of uh, 2016, one of the amendments to the plan that was adopted was a change that said uh, to include neighborhood and community plans should be respected as appropriate as they are integrated into the sub area and the community plans would integrate and eventually incorporate. And that, that was an amendment that was passed. So what I'm concerned about is what happens to our neighborhood plan once it's adopted. Is that plan still effective? Is that still part of the ordinances of the city of San Antonio? So when it comes to the land use and development policies, um, effectively the Midtown plan will replace the Menke Park plan. Um, and, um, and so that's, I mean, that's the short answer is that the, the Menke Park plan will be replaced by the, Mid by the Midtown plan. The Tobin Hill community plan, the Five Points neighborhood plan, um, another neighborhood plan over that addresses areas by Fredericksburg Road, and the Westford Alliance plan will also be replaced. And it's the same case with many other neighborhood plans around the city, is that they'll be replaced by the new plans that we're making. Um, so there's things within the plan that you created in 2001, 2002, that we can incorporate and carry over as ideas that remain relevant given existing conditions and that still reflect community values. Um, but, but they won't be incorporated by reference. Like the Nike Park plan is hereby, you know, remains adopted, still part of the Midtown plan. It's, yeah, it's more like we take ideas from it. So, so what happens to all that work we did? What happens to all of the goals that don't, I mean, the, what I see of this plan is it's only about land use and it's only about justifying higher intensities of use uh, for our neighborhoods. And, and that, that's a small part of what's in our neighborhood plan. And so, uh, but based on, yeah. Um, yes, and then we'll go to Morgan. She okay. kind of her hand up. And then I'd also like uh, Charles Mazuka, uh, who is here from Councilman Shaw's office, District District 2. Uh, Mr. Mazuka is the zoning and policy advisor for District 2. So, Butch, yes. You okay, I, I just want to make it clear that San Antonio tomorrow is more than just land use. Land use is the last part that we're working on. That and, and the goals. What 
has preceded this was a whole uh, thing on sustainability. There's a sustainability plan which addressed the environment, the culture, and dealing with health and wellness. Uh, there's a whole, and go out and look at it, there's a three-pronged plan for San Antonio Tomorrow. One is San Antonio Tomorrow Comprehensive Plan, land use. Then <clears throat> the other was the corridor plan, which deals with transportation. And you heard, heard the mayor in the last couple of weeks starting to talk about that and how we begin to deal with the need to get all these people to work that are coming. So that's a separate plan, the corridor plan. And then the sustainability was a separate plan. My point being just that, you know, what I heard was it's only land use. No, it's not. Land use is the last part that we're dealing with. And fortunately, you all are having an opportunity to give Garrett feedback on that. And we're also going to have a commission meeting tomorrow, a uh, comprehensive plan uh, committee meeting of the uh, council, and we're dealing with the land use plan in part. So it's not not done. And the other, one more thing, and then I'll get out of the way. <laughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> I don't mean to take over. The San Antonio tomorrow is 20,000 feet up. It's not in the weeds. It's not dealing with the minutia for the neighborhood at that point. It's looking at what's happening to San Antonio in general. All right. I'll, I'll button it up. Th thank you, Blush. I, I do want to come back to that issue and Morgan. So what's the possibility of still keeping our neighborhood plans? Is that completely off the table? Are you not looking for input on whether or not we want to keep that? So we're not looking for input on whether or not the neighborhood plan will remain the adopted official plan. Um, I have multiple copies of the neighborhood plan and I'm gonna to continue to have them. Um, and when we update the Midtown plan in uh, five to 10 years, it'll continue to be useful as a reference. It can also continue to be useful uh, as a uh, sort of strategic guide and memorialization in more detail than we can get to in the Midtown Plan of some neighborhood values um, and information and history. I mean, it's a it's an incredible resource um, Garrett, and an interesting. We already yeah. have a problem with the city not fully upholding our NCB. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that you're going to take bits and pieces of this neighborhood plan and you know use that for your decisions, but in reality, that's not realistic. So this is basically just a broad stroke over all these neighborhood plans. You're just eliminating all the character and detail of these older established neighborhoods. And that just doesn't seem like good planning. So we're not, um, we're actually uh, not trying to eliminate the character and detail of neighborhoods. Um, the, the Midtown plan that we're at the tail end of writing right now um, emphasizes uh, in multiple places that um, the growth and change that's supposed to occur is supposed to uh, really primarily happen outside of neighborhoods um, on along the primary transit corridors and in some areas um, like so on the blocks adjacent to Broadway for example or Since next to San Pedro. Sorry. No, 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 just just right next the, some the, of our streets are on one block. block yeah, so, and, and even then, the idea is that if it, if it feels like a traditional neighborhood area, there's not supposed to be a lot of change going on there. So I don't want to get over, overly formalistic about the definition of a block. Um, but, so that's the idea. And, you know, there's also some other areas, like between um, McCullough and San Pedro, uh, south of San Antonio College, south of Cypress, where there's lots of parking lots and there's room for growth um, in a way that, uh, wouldn't affect uh, an, an existing traditional residential area. But specific to our neighborhood, in the land use map that you shared with us last month, and I think there's at least one or two copies on each table, um, that the streets south of um, uh, okay. Funston are all um, okay. Identified as a future future high density residential. Um, That's my street, by the way. 
which which includes streets that have many single family homes on 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 them still. And so I, I think that's a concern um, that that there is a zoning issue. And and um, I'd like to maybe Mr. Mazuka to uh, address some of the the zoning issues and uh, the issue about the neighborhood plan as well. Just to make it clear, this UV, ULDR, based on our other meetings, is up to three units on one residential lot. These are our 50 by maybe 140, where there's one residence right now. Those could be developed instead of just into a duplex. You could have up to three units. Am I correct? So what we're what we're writing into the plan is that um, you could only, and it's based probably on the feedback you gave us before, and it's what all the other neighborhoods want as well, is that we recommend no zoning changes in the traditional neighborhood areas. So right now, for example, north of Mackey Park, uh, it's mostly a single family and duplexes are allowed, I think, on, on many of the, the lots in, in the R4 area. And the idea is that that's not supposed to change. So we will, we're, we're writing into the plan that even though this broad category that we also have to use in other parts of the city says that you could conceivably have um, up to a fourplex, even though, if more than three units on a 4,000 square foot lot, if you could figure out a way to put the parking on it, which typically doesn't work. You get up to a fourplex, you could also have neighborhood commercial in that area. But we know that's not, you know, it's common sense to me at this point, based on all the conversations I've had, that that's not appropriate in the neighborhood area. And so we have to add text into the plan to get more specific than what the map can, can say. Why don't and you do that in new neighborhoods rather than in the old homes? Would everyone as you speak please uh, say your name? Oh, I'm Colleen Fletcher. Oh. And I'm, I'm actually going to, I'm sorry I was speaking to you with my back okay. of my head turned. I'm going to move up here um, so that you can see me. But I am this if that's okay. And I'm sorry, Colleen, would you please repeat your question? But yes, really why, why is it that you're going to go ahead and um, take advantage of our, our space? Why don't you, you know, in your planning, make new subdivisions where you can do this, you know, right from the very beginning? So we're making plans for um, all areas of the city over the next five years. Every community in San Antonio will have a chance to participate in making a plan. Um, we think it's important to continue revisiting plans in older areas of the city as well. Um, as new conditions arise, new realities, um, like uh, Polly said, by 2040 there's going to be a lot more people in San Antonio. A lot of people, a lot of San Antonians being born here, and a lot of people moving here. Um, and it, it's it's worthwhile to, to revisit and remake plans. Now, um, in some ways, um, it's, it's like we're not making radical new plans, right? Like the neighborhood, like I said, we're recommending that it primarily stay the same and that the change occur uh, just adjacent to the uh, larger busy streets and in some of the areas where there's vast amounts of vacant land and surface parking. So have you gone around, have you put this map together, have you actually visited these areas? <clears throat> so like, because you're talking about blocks by Broadway, okay? If you look at, uh, for example, my street mm -hmm. and, and Perry Street, we're right there. Mm -hmm. So if you add any more commercial to that, then our whole street is commercial. Mm -hmm. okay? so, Who's gone from the city and really looked at our neighborhood and said, hey, these are where it's really appropriate. Because if you just leave it blanket like this, and even though you say it's not going to change, someone, someone's going to interpret it. You have to really be very, very specific in this. And then that's the whole problem that we've had with the city is the city, people that are making a lot of decisions don't ever go out and really visit. Yeah. The, the, the neighborhood. So, so that, I still don't even know where all of that came from and how it was even decided. May I follow up on something she said? Um, Jeremy, say your name. I'm Francie O'Reilly, and I live on Elmhurst. 
Johnny said that uh, the newer plan will be more vague and that the lo our plans are specific. And I think that is the crucial difference between the San Antonio tomorrow plan and neighborhood plans. There are probably people who would really welcome vagueness in plans because those people can then go to the city council and, as you say, interpret those plans to their benefit when things are clearly stated as they are locally in neighborhood plans, that is more difficult. Uh, it's more difficult to override the wishes of the neighborhood. And I think that's where ordinances and specifics are really important. You can have vague ordinances about pet care, but until you say, a dog may not be chained on a six foot chain. It's not clear what people may and may not do. I want it to be as clear as possible. So there's sections of the plan where we can say things like there should not be commercial encroachment beyond Margaret or um, beyond Margaret and uh, Catalpa, right? And come out and say that there shouldn't be commercial encroachment beyond where the land use map says mixed use up on Davis Court. Why do you use the uh, term should instead of would or will not? Should um, Well, to be honest, the plans are fundamentally recommendations. I mean, it's not the regular, it's not the zoning code itself. So it's just a, an honest way of talking about long range planning because it's, it's, it's recommendation oriented. And, and the zoning commission and city council, when they consider a rezone request, they're supposed to follow the plan. And um, and our intention is to update the plans often enough that they feel confident that they continue to reflect the most up-to-date and relevant information and that they do follow them as closely as possible. So I appreciate that, I mean, that, yeah, that concern about, about vagary and the there's been real experiences where that's, it feels like that's been taken advantage of. Specific examples that multiple people in this room probably have, and, um, and that that's a real concern. But, but, but once again, I'll oh, go ahead. Um, I could ask you the same question. Uh, Mike Bamberg, Carmen. Um, we've got all these neighborhood plans that will be subsumed. Why not work out where there's a conflict between the neighborhood plan and the San Antonio plan, clean up that area, and adopt these as annexes to those plans, since these are specific and yours is 20,000 foot view? Well, I guess I'm not really prepared to answer that question. Um, so the decision to, to make these plans the way that we're making them was made um, over a year ago a year and a half or two years ago. And it's, um, as far as I know, a done decision. And we, we proceeded, you know, I proceeded to work on this plan with the neighborhoods with that as, you know, sort of like the new reality. Um, and um, and really tried to, to learn as much as I can and make the plan relevant to the neighborhoods and everyone in the area. As we know from the news report, city council can override anything. Yeah, they can. You know, like like I said, city manager I might have said, can override anything too. Yeah, like we're we're planning on making plans for every part of the city in the next five years. Well, that's dependent on city council deciding that we should continue to do so every year. Well, uh, going back to the, the ordinance, the amendment that was approved said, uh, change the language to read, include neighborhood and community plans uh, should be respected as appropriate as they're integrated into the sub-area plans. And another change was community plans should be integrated and uh, will eventually incorporate. So it sounds to me like, at least in August of 2015, the decision was to incorporate these neighborhood plans into what we're doing. Now, who, who made the decision to change that? Are we the only ones with that clause? No, that's a city. That's a city clause? Okay. That's an ordinance. Okay. And why didn't we know this was happening until last month? So... Was it this council and this mayor that made the decision to change it? 
So when, so, um, when I visited Menke Park last year, um, when I communicate with the planning team, and when we've been in other public meetings, uh, the qu this question of what will happen to the neighborhood plans, um, I think it's been raised in, in almost all the meetings. And I've tried to say plainly that the plans are being replaced, while also, you know, keep trying to um, say that they could continue to be useful in some ways. But the, you know, like I said earlier, I try, try to state state that. Well, way. I, I I think I asked that question. I don't think I heard an answer until the last meeting when Charlene Lucas at the end of the meeting specifically said, is this going to supersede the neighborhood plan? And he finally said yes. Yeah. And before, we had always been told, too, that you're going to have this plan until Midtown Region, and that there would be a section for Menke Park for the different neighborhoods. There would be a section. We were told that. Yeah. And now it doesn't seem like we're going to have this section where we have our NCD, have some maybe these other um, points that are in the plan that would be specific to our neighborhood that we care about. So I don't hear that we're going to have that. Anymore. So there will be a section about the uh, primarily about the residential areas of Menke Park, and it's going to be very short. Um, it's going to be um, probably about two pages worth of text. Instead of 78, I think. What is it going to do? So, and there's actually a copy of that um, on all of the tables. And, uh, and it looks like this. It's red and, and black text. And so it boils down some of the, where I've heard to be some of the main priorities uh, from the neighborhood. Anyone need copies? Raise your hand. And there'll be one of these for each of the neighborhoods. Um, there'll, there'll be one for Trevor Hill. And there'll also be things, you know, beyond the, those two to three pages, there'll be things that are in the rest of the plan um, that you normally would have found in the Nike Park neighborhood plan. Like there's going to be a land use map, right, that, that addresses all the neighborhoods together. Well, that would have been part of the 78 page making park plan, and there'll be there'll be a section on infrastructure and amenities. It's just it's addressed at a at a broader level. So uh, again, to try to as plain as possible, it's not the same thing. It is more general. It addresses uh, it addresses more common issues and priorities across neighborhoods than purely local ones. And uh, the three page part is is mostly for the. <coughs> like more local issues and priorities. Uh, Charles, um, would you, you want to say something? Oh, I, I wanted to uh, ask Derek if maybe with regard to the amendment that George read, um, how, that, how that amendment reconciles with today's implementation. And if you, and if you, don't, if you don't know that or don't have that answer, maybe you can email me that technical language and I can disperse it back to the Neighborhood Association. But that expectation that George read, uh, as I understand it, was an expectation that would be carried on through the implementation process that we're doing now on, or the, that will become staff's recommendation to the council. So if, if you can't answer that now, that's good, but if you want to take some time and send me an email to get better language on that or more technical language on that, um, just putting that out there for you. Regarding the amendment that George... Right, right. How, that, how that reconciles with... As far as you know, what, did, did the council change that, that ordinance? Or Good. has there been something to supersede it? Or? No, so my, I mean, my understanding is that we incorporate neighborhood plans by trying to incorporate the information and values that remain relevant after several years into the, into the Midtown plan. Um, so, so that's, so yeah, you're but, saying, but I will, but, but, uh, but Charles, yes, I will speak with the director okay. who would have been, you know, is in charge of our department about that. Uh, okay. Oh, go ahead. Uh, this, uh, the, these meeting minutes refer to an ordinance and the amendments are by page and section number 
of some document. And I, I didn't find any place on the development services website a copy of that document so I could look at these by page number or item number to find out what they could say. What, what, what did this, what document did this set of meeting minutes adopt? Can I help you with that? If you look at, uh, Holly sent out to you a, a picture of what I talked about right. on uh, Saturday and in there is a slide where there are at least 20 references to the community, uh, to the neighborhood plans in the comprehensive plan as that because tier one worked with city council before they approved the comprehensive plan to make sure and it's in the first paragraph of the comprehensive plan that you must look at the neighborhood plan or the neighborhood plan is the building block i misspoke neighborhood plan is the building block but there are 20 references in the comprehensive plan to the neighborhoods Okay, my question is, what is the document that, that this Where can I find a copy of it? It's the copy of the plan. So, yeah, I can take a photo of it. He can look at it. No, I mean, I, 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 I spent hours today on the website, and, and there's always summaries and discussions and all this stuff, but I never found anything that says page, uh, you know, page 17.1, Page 17.4, 14. What, what document is this referring to? The conference is 330 pages long, and I know 17.1 is one of the four, and one's actual. Okay, and is that, is that plan section 17.1, not page 17.1? So, George, the conference plan is, is a bigger plan, and then the Midtown's underneath it. Yeah, but, okay. but it's 330 it's pages it's long, and those numbers. Is that on the city's website? Yes. Yes. Well, where is it? The numbers. Uh, the San Antonio Comprehensive Plan. Seven, mm -hmm. okay. That's a section. Okay. What side? What's this page? Does it say this page? This was this page. So, so www.sa comp plan. So two P's. Dot com. Oh, okay. Oh. And, and I can email you. When I get there, then how do I get to this document that you're referring to? Um, look for a tab that says Documents Library. And email me if it takes you longer than two minutes to do it. And I'll send you a link. Yeah. Or maybe you could just I can send, you send us a link and we'll I can send you a forward it. I have the link. Yeah. So, you, so though, when you're, you're saying, so because I was part of that rewrite and everything with, with the tier one, and that's really at a very high level, right, that plan, the comprehensive plan. Now we're going deep into, we're going into Midtown, and that's how everything's going to be implemented. So all those places where we're talking about neighborhood plans are going to be included in the Midtown plan, in the regional plans, it comes to this. And this just tells me these are just some of our priorities. I don't know how it's going to be used to guide to make decisions when you're actually in meetings, like zoning meetings, they can get these out and say, oh, this one right here, well, that's a real challenge for them, so we probably shouldn't approve this because it's a challenge. That's kind of getting down to that specifics because we need something that we can use at those meetings to guide. Yeah, so yeah. there'll be a, a section called land use, there'll be a land use section for the whole area. And where we're headed right now is, it, is to write there that in areas designated for low density residential, zoning changes are discouraged, both up zones and down zones. So like what's there, the existing zoning should remain the same. And frankly, for this area that you talked about that's designated high density residential, south of Mankey Park, the park south of uh, Funston, it's mostly zone MF33, and we're headed towards recommending that the zoning just stay the same there as well. Um, and for those of you who don't know, would you uh, define what MF33 is? So MF33 allows for up to 33 units per acre, which on a 5,000 square foot lot, uh, there's, let's see, eight 
eight and a half, five thousand square foot lots in an acre. So that comes out to south of nine hundred parcels, that isn't it? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there are lots and lots of single family homes down. <coughs> Well, so it could be like a like a triplex or a fourplex on a five thousand square foot lot. If, if, if the recommendation is going to be keep the zoning the way it is, why do we need a recommendation at all? Well, because and so that's an important question because the map, this land, this future land use map has really um, it has these broad categories, and there are a set of categories that we're we're using in plans throughout the city. And so, if you were to just look at the map without having those te that text recommendation, you could think, like I uh, mentioned a little while ago, and I said it over there, that um, that the plan is is just recommending that um, that quadplexes and and commercial establishments are okay in the neighborhoods because that's what the category itself would lead you to believe. But really, they're not, so we have to say that with some extra text. Because the, the, the categories we're using them citywide, so we need a com we're using a common set of categories. I have one question for Garrett. And, and, um, and so it just needs some extra text. So that's, that would be then with the land use from the key parts, extra text in some, some of the different places where it says you can have, like, for the ULDR, there's like R6, R. 18, I mean, there's a lot of different things that are in there. Yeah, that, yeah, multi-family 18 units. Yeah, 18 acres. units alone. No. Yeah. yeah, but it's there. It's there. <laughs> and so, so you're saying then, with the land use map for Mickey Park, the section of Mickey Park, then you would have that extra tax. Is that how it's going to work? Yeah, so in cities um, far and wide, you, they use a common, a common set of land use categories. And then, the communities that are actually part of these plans and the planners that are actually working with the communities, you know, have to get have to get down to more detail. And and it's it's so it sounds I appreciate that it sounds contradictory, like well why you're contradicting yourself. You have a category that says you can do these things and you're adding this extra text that says you can't. And uh, Oh the, the text that says you can't. Yeah. Yeah, the extra modified text. Okay. Well, I, and I wouldn't. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be here telling you that we write those things if it was uh, okay, supposed so to be. Okay, so things have happened. I asked the question. <laughs> okay, so so the last time we met with you, you passed out this definition of some of these terms, and for example, urban low density residential, which is what you've got designated for the north part of the neighborhood. It says permitted zoning districts, R3, R4, R5, R6, RM5, RM6, MF18, which I assume is 18 units per acre, and NC. So, so what this suggests is it's okay for properties that are now R4 to be rezoned to any of these higher density uh, zoning categories. Yes. Okay, and by the same token, this uh, high density residential uh, you, you got uh, RM4, MF25, MF33, which is what most of it is, and then MF40, and I don't know what these are, uh, MH, MHC, and uh, MPH, but I presume that these are uh, higher density. So, so what you're doing with this map is suggesting that it's okay to rezone uh, essentially the entire residential neighborhood to higher densities than it is now, and, and mostly higher densities than it's actually built out. Mm. That's what the map. I'm, 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 I'm going to ask the city councilman to uh, have our neighborhood removed from this plan. Garrett, I just, I just wanted to say that what George was drilling down to has been the majority of some of the questions that I've been receiving in our office yeah. on those specific examples. Yeah. Um, and then not knowing if there was an opportunity for consensus on what would be acceptable from the association to add that at this point, um, if there was a way to do that um, other than what 
George had, had recommended that he was going to ask the councilman to do. Was there any room for that kind of uh, negotiation or if the group gets together and goes through the, the categories as George read out and said, you know, maybe we're okay with R and 4, but those other densities were not. Um, is there still room for that? Yeah, so we're, we're not done writing the plan. Um, the way the categories are set up, those are, those are categories that, that I and other project managers working up in other parts of the city have to use. Right. Um, but like I said, the extra text that we add is, I mean, that's stuff that can be revised until the very end. And uh, based on what I've heard so far, it would have us writing that the zoning stay the same rather than changing to that long list that uh, any of those things on the list that George uh, read. Gary, I'm not sure what the point is of having this like, subtext for our neighborhood. Why not just reference our neighborhood plan? Yes. 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 Because we've been asked to use a common set of land use categories throughout the whole city of San Antonio. Yeah. Which you're already saying you're doing. But what I'm saying is when you get to the subtext that is specific to our neighborhood, why not just reference the neighborhood plan? Mm -hmm. So, um, that's an interesting question. I mean, I can look at it and we can talk about referencing some of that text. Um, make your job easier. Well, I mean, I, mean, I think the answer is if, if we're going to do this at all, is that you keep the neighborhood plan in place and it's only modified to the extent it's in conflict with mm -hmm. this plan. Work up the conflict. Uh, I mean, neither document needs to be cha changed. This document doesn't need to be changed. Okay. Yeah. What we say is the neighborhood plan is still in place to the extent there's a conflict with the uh, Midtown plan, the Midtown plan plan for that. But, because again, we, we have dealt with a lot of issues in here that, that don't involve land use and, 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 and we deal with issues specific to the neighborhood, traffic on specific streets, drainage on specific streets. Um, we, we, we got a list in here someplace, all the sidewalks we want for it replaced, and it's by street. I mean, th this is in exquisite detail because people spent hundreds of hours over a period of a year working on it. And I, I just don't see why we're throwing this out, you know, for, for a plan that it looks like to me is nothing but a justification for increasing density. Yes. Yeah. The problem, too, that you have with adding the text or whatever text to the zoning is that's just a recommendation and it can get overruled and get lost. You have all those different categories within that one uh, on land use. That property can be that, but for Mickey Park, it's recommended not these things. But that's going to get that's going to get lost and it will get argued and. Well, that's the idea. Yeah. Isn't it? No, the idea is not for it to be lost and for it to but be it will. lost. And but it will. Yeah. I mean, we have enough problems with turning into our, our neighborhood plan and our NCD with just having words saying, you know, that it's not recommended for, for to use these categories. I just don't see how that's going to work. Oh, can I ask but, one question here? Well, one, one more. Hold uh, off, Butch. We're almost out of time, and I know. Um, there are several of you in the room who have not had a chance to uh, ask any questions. And so I'd like to invite you specifically. Um, if you... Yes, I don't have a question, but just a comment. The land use scares the crap out of me. The change in land use because we have parking lots where we don't want them. We have high rises where we don't want them. There are all kinds of developers wanting to grab up the land and develop it for their own use and higher density. We have businesses where we don't want them in the middle of residential streets. All this stuff keeps happening, which is why we're so crazy about how land use is going to change for the neighborhood. That's what I want to say. Um, anyone else who's new? Uh, here? Because so, I have a, a clarifying question. So, since the, the plan, as you said, the comprehensive plan and the town plan is built into the comprehensive plan and the set of recommendations. So even if we got to the point where instead of having recommendation text, we said reference 
the existing neighborhood plan. The existing neighborhood plan isn't currently adopted in like ordinance form and wouldn't be even if we use that as the reference text, correct? This is all just suggestions that are supposed to guide decisions moving forward, correct? Yeah, so the neighborhood plans were recommendations. They're policy. They're not they're not regulation and law per se. They're, they're like policy recommendations. And the, the midtown plan will be policy recommendations. But for example, that those recommendations might be used to uh, make decisions about incentives for developers. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like where, where should incentives be used and where should they not be used? Uh, what should be incentivized? Um, and how? Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Anyone else? Okay, then, then Butch, you have the question. Well, my, my big concern, and I've made the mistake of going and looking at the corridor plan today, that's <laughs> gotten me in trouble. Um, and, and no, and we, we need to be concerned about it because uh, there's been a, a, a fight over this in uh, Monte Vista. The TOD, uh, TOD zone. When you look in, in uh, Broadway and uh, Hildebrand, would be one of the stations. And uh, for the comprehensive, uh, for the corridor plan, because you've got all the traffic from uh, Thousand Oaks all the way down Austin Highway, feeding through down into Broadway, and you have to have stations along, cops along the way. And one, it makes sense to put it at Hildebrand and Broadway. But my concern is the, uh, the land use that was in that plan, the quarter plan, has that coming a half mile on either side to do high density. And that would be Manatee Park. Yeah, it's our whole neighborhood. 90%. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right, and, and that's a good point, Butch, in that's, terms of... I'm just trying to get the marriage there. Where is it? Right, and you mentioned also the sustainability plan, the, the transportation plan, and these seem to be happening in piecemeal, and I feel like we've lost track of the transportation plan. And at some point, we need to revisit those to see what's going on. We, we need updates on those. Right. And um, so we'll try to arrange for that as well. Um, but we really need to wrap up. Um, what are we going to do with this? When I uh, when I came tonight, I had a presentation. I was planning on facilitating some discussion about that in the land use map, and that's that this this has been fine as an alternative. Um, Can we feed back? But so, but so in any case, what's here is based on conversations from prior prior conversations I've had with neighboring people. The Making Parts Plan and the March meeting. And, I, and we revised this after the March meeting to reflect the over hour long discussion that we had and some of the feedback that we got. And we're also revising the land use map based on the discussion from the March meeting. And it's not shown here because we have changes to make in several areas of Midtown. And where we're headed is including some lower density than what's here mixed use on Broadway and changing the high density residential to, to medium density residential for the most part south of the park. But in any case, the idea is that the zoning just stays the same. So that, that part of the recommendation doesn't change. And in any case, you can take this and read it, and you can email me, and I have my email as part of the presentation. Um, there's business cards on the tables, um, and maybe I'll I don't know if I can pull it up around the principal starts this gone. Um, but if you want my email address, come come to me and I will write it back to you. Right, and we will post it on our Facebook page and also on next door uh, neighborhood. And the whole draft plan is going to be coming up online, not in months, not in days, but in weeks. Okay, so it'll be there for you to look at, and there'll be. Um, my contact information, as there has been for some time, and forms that you can fill out to submit uh, to submit comments. And I can come back to additional neighborhood meetings. And you said um, there was a, a midtown meeting planned. Was it? 
It's a meeting tentatively planned for around June 1st. So we will try our best to publicize that uh, to the neighborhood. And there is, I'm sorry, I'm going to kind of wrap up, but there is a email sign up sheet on this table, and it'll be here for five minutes or so if you want to give your email address. Many of you are already on the email list, but some of you are not. Okay, thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, just a few quick announcements. If you haven't signed in uh, with Gary Cox, our treasurer at the back room, Gary, raise your hand. Uh, please do so before you leave. Um, I know there have been a number of um, uh, posts, both on our Facebook page and um, emails that have been sent to the Neighborhood Association, both about the recent uh, graffiti in the neighborhood, as well as concern about um, the traffic situation on Claremont. Um, we have notified um, Mr. Shaw's office, um, and um, we have been, um, we'll be connecting with uh, various um, departments in the city to assist with uh, that. Uh, Mr. Bazooka said he also notified the uh, sent into the police department specifically about the uh, speeding issue on Claremont, and we'll be discussing it at our board meeting next Monday. Yes? Is there any, like, any chance that they can introduce patrol presence in the neighborhood? I don't know what the, the FAM viewers know, so, but that I know has worked in other neighborhoods, I believe. Yeah. I, Officer Martinez, if you go to the website, there's a resource page, and Officer Martinez, you can uh, call him and ask him to come down the street. Okay. And, for our, and, and we'll, we'll also follow up with Mr. Mizuka, and you can probably even grab him right now before he leaves and ask him that specifically. And our safe officer uh, is here, Mr. Lopez. Um, code enforcement. Oh, code enforcement. I'm sorry. Code enforcement. Oh, sorry. I apologize. <laughs> uh, and, um, um, so if uh, there are issues uh, that you're concerned about or you have questions, um, I know we'd be happy to, um, um, to answer them for you. And also we have a representative from Ms. Gervin Hawkins' office. Yes. Um, just please introduce yourself and um, just, if you could briefly um, so again, my name is Joey Pavlik. I was introduced, I believe, at the January meeting of when Representative Herbert Hawkins was here. My name is Joey Pavlik. I'm your constituent services and community outreach manager for District 120. And uh, just let me know if you ever have any concerns. Uh, I left some newsletters at the sign-in desk over here. They're from this past fall, but they're about her last legislative session, the 85th. Uh, of course, we're coming out to the 86th in January 2019. But of course, if you have any questions or concerns, how we can help you with other state agencies or uh, recommendations for upcoming legislation, feel free to reach out to our office. So, thank you for having us. Okay. Thank you. And I guess uh, we need to wrap up. Uh, but thank you all for coming. Yes. Is, are the meetings now regularly going to be here and start at 7 o'clock? Yeah. That's the plan. Does anyone um, um, have an objection to that? Did we get kicked out of Lionsville? No. We no. Just it would be nice to but um, there was a request from some of our um, younger neighbors that this might be a uh, more conducive to uh, an inviting um, venue for families <coughs> and children, especially because the playground is right outside the store. Uh, and also, um, several people indicated that they'd like to, they thought they could more easily walk to the meeting if it was here as opposed to Lions Field. More easily walk to Lions Field. <laughs> 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. What about the Does anyone object to the 7 o'clock start time? Yes, <laughs> uh, one, one of the problems is people who might have an objection may not be here. <laughs> so, I had assumed that the earlier start had to do with families being able to come with young children. I see one family here with young children, and otherwise I see older people. So, um, it is well, that we are here. I mean, who's, who here would prefer a Sunday o'clock start oh, show? We're only meeting at 30. We're young. Okay. Who would prefer a Sunday o'clock start time?
on, raise your hand. I'd like to <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> Does anyone prefer the 7.30 start time? <laughs>